Installing the OMB upgrade kit is not very complicated, but it still must be done correctly in the right order. So we've tried to make everything clear and simple. The process shouldn't take more than 30 minutes. However, it is very important to be precise and careful. If at any point, mainly during soldering, you're unsure of your ability to do it properly, if, for example, you're not acquainted with the terms cold joint or insufficient wetting, and if you don't own your own soldering iron, you may not want to experiment on your guitar for your first soldering project. So please stop and take your guitar to an electronic savvy friend or a trusted guitar electronics shop to take care of this part of the installation for you. You can find all the safety information, as well as a detailed installation, instructions, operation, and all the rest on the online manual at OMBGuitars.com. Almost everything you need is included in the OMB Upgrade Kit. All you need to add is a soft cloth, a bit of your favorite guitar cleaning solution, scissors, and about 30 minutes. Oh, and one more thing, a soldering iron that can be adjusted to 660 degrees Fahrenheit or 350 degrees Celsius. The OMB Upgrade Kit is compatible with different guitar models. Bridge Pin Acoustic Guitar, Pinless Bridge Acoustic Guitar, Through Body Electric Guitar, Hardtail Bridge Guitar, Tunomatic Bridge Electric Guitar. If you have a different type of guitar, please contact our team before installing. Unpacking the add-on device. What's in the kit? Set of guitar strings, add-on device, USB cable, fine steel wool, flat copper tape, diamond tape, add-on device adhesive strip, string guide insulation sleeve, string through spacer block, hardtail bridge spacer block for hardtail electric guitar, spacer block insulating for electric guitars, turn on, turn off, gently remove plastic cover, disconnect the brain from base and charge it. Preparing the guitar. Some procedures are common for all guitars. While you are working, please be aware that in order to get the best results, the best accuracy and quick response, the strings must touch the frets. If the frets have any corrosion or grease on them or are just dirty, the signal and accuracy are at risk. Therefore, it is important to pay attention to the next step. Take the fine steel wool from the packaging and very gently remove any corrosion or grease from the surface of the frets. Remember to include the fret edges on both sides of the fingerboard. Be careful not to scrape the finish off the frets. Make sure to clean the tip of the fret on both sides. Then use a soft cloth moistened with your favorite cleaning fluid to clean the fingerboard, taking special care to remove any residue of the steel wool. Let the neck dry while you go to the next stage. Remove the old strings. Carefully remove the bridge, making sure you place the screws in a safe place. With a pair of scissors, cut the flex connector on the third perforation. Place the PVC on the flex connector. Place the flex connector on the holes of the guitar, making sure that the holes align with the guitar holes. Replace the bridge on top of the PVC and the flex connector. Tighten the screws. Slide the metal sleeve on each string all the way down to the tail. Thread the sleeves through the string holes. Cut the plastic sleeve beyond the bridge so that it is long enough to prevent the string from touching the metal, but short enough so that it will not buzz when you play. Begin stringing your guitar. Lightly angle the base upward, clean the body of the guitar below the bridge, remove the adhesive backing, then press it down on the body of the guitar to fix it in place. Soldering the flat conductive tape to the frets. This part is common for all types of guitars and must be done carefully. For demonstrative purposes, we are using an acoustic guitar. If at any point you feel insecure in your ability to install properly, or if you're not acquainted with the terms cold joint or insufficient wetting. If you don't own your own soldering iron, you may not want to experiment on your guitar for the first soldering project. 
So please stop and take your guitar to an electronic savvy friend or a trusted guitar electronic shop to take care of this part of the installation for you. Only use a soldering iron that can be adjusted at 660 degrees Fahrenheit or 350 degrees Celsius. Attaching flat copper tape to the guitar neck. Before starting, make sure that you have cleaned both sides of the guitar neck and it is perfectly dry. We recommend that you first apply solder to the fret and then the flat conductive tape to assure that you create joints only on the metal surfaces. Letting hot solder touch the fretboard or neck may damage the wood finish. Now you'll attach the flat copper tape and start with one side of the neck. Take one piece of the flat copper tape with a copper facing upward. The tape must be placed with a millimeter sticking above the fretboard so it can be folded over the tip of the fret to create contact between the fret and the tape. Pull a small section of the backing away to reveal the adhesive and press the end of the flat conductive tape against the neck of the guitar. Continue attaching the flat conductive tape to the neck of the guitar, making sure to press the copper strip over the end of each fret as you go. Cut the flat conductive tape when it has gone beyond the first fret. Solder the ends of each fret to the flat copper tape. Examine each joint when it is done to make sure that it is clean and shiny to avoid all cuts while playing. After you have completed soldering on one side, repeat the same process on the other. Now give both sides another look. Repair any suspicious joints. If you own a multimeter or can borrow one from a friend, you can assure yourself that the joints are good by measuring the resistance between the two adjacent frets and verify that it is no higher than 0.5 ohms. Continue checking all adjacent fret pairs pair by pair. Attaching the diamond conductive tape. In this step, You'll attach the snap connector of the diamond conductive tape to the add-on device. Lay it on the body of your guitar in a pleasing shape. Trim it to size so it will reach one of the copper areas in the end of a flat copper tape, which conducts the signal to the add-on device, and then solder it to the flat copper tape as close to the 14th fret as possible. Take the diamond conductive tape and press its snap connector on the base until you hear it snap. Before continuing, Lift the snap connector of the base slightly. Make sure that the area of the snap is clean. Remove the adhesive backing and press it to the body of the guitar. Remove a portion of the adhesive strip from the diamond conductive tape and attach the first few segments to the body of the guitar. Plan out a design that matches the lines of your guitar, keeping the following in mind. The end of the diamond conductive tape after trimming must be soldered on the copper point at the end of the flat conductive tape. Once you have an idea for your design, look at the diamond conductive tape and notice the conductive copper that is visible in the last nine segments. Trim the diamond conductive tape in the middle of any of these nine segments so the design you are making ends up exactly at the copper point at the end of the flat conductive tape. When you have completed your design, measure the end of the diamond conductive tape and cut it in the center of the closest segment. Place the cut end of the diamond conductive tape against the copper point at the end of the flat conductive tape and solder them together. Make sure that you make a good clean joint. You can now put away your soldering iron. Completing add-on device installation. Just a few more steps and you'll be ready. Take the brain and push in the clasps at the sides. Push the base down until it snaps into the clasps. If the brain has not completed a full two hour charge, you may leave it plugged in a while while you set up the OMB app and begin to play. Install the OMB app and then turn on your OMB guitar. Open the OMB app Expand the right top menu icon and tap Bluetooth. Tap connect when you see identify OMB guitars. You should now see on the main screen top left an icon of the battery level of the OMB device. If you strum your guitar with your left hand, go to the setting options in the menu and select right-handed guitarist and then OK. Calibration. 
Calibration lets the OMB app identify the frets so it can interpret where your fingers push down on the strings. Calibration is used every time you change your guitar strings. Calibration can also be affected by extreme weather changes. So when you're not playing your guitar, we recommend that you keep it at room temperature. While you can sync your guitar by bridging strings with your first finger, it is much easier to use a capo. Make sure that your OMB powered guitar is on and linked to the OMB app. First, tap Calibration from the Settings menu. The Guitar Sync window displays a representation of a guitar neck to guide you through the calibration process. Tap Start. The first fret turns red, and then the Start button begins to blink. Put a capo on the guitar to bridge the first fret of your guitar. When the first fret has calibrated, it turns green. The calibrated fret returns to its original color, and the next fret turns red. Place the capo on that fret until it turns green. Repeat for 12 frets. On the acoustic guitar, the 12th fret may be a little more difficult, so find a comfortable way to do it. After 12 frets, the screen shows six strings. Press the top string, E, on fret five until the red turns to green. Then press string A, then D, G, B, E. For best results, avoid moving the guitar during calibration and make sure that the capo is steady and is pressing down on all six strings. If during calibration, the green light flickers, stabilize the capo to get a steady green light. App Tutorial. Turn on the app. Theme menu icon, backing tracks. Save recordings. Choose a genre you wish to play. For example, rock, ballad, country. Choose the specific style you wish to play. On main screen, you will see lower bar for each style. Intro, A, B, C, D, outro, start. Intro gives you a nice and smooth intro into the song you are playing. You may also start the accompaniment by pressing start. A, B, C, and D are preset features allowing different rhythmic and voicing options within the style. A second press on A, B, C, or D operates a preset fill suitable for a specific style, adjusted in real time to the time and measure you are currently playing. Sync has two functionalities. When sync is pressed before starting to play, any chord you will play on the guitar will trigger the style to start while accompaniment is running. If you miss the beat press sync, it will return to the first bar so you don't skip a beat. Adjusting levels of channels of accompaniment. There are sliders for five channels. Each channel represents a different instrument in the band. Tap the icon under the slide to mute or unmute that channel. You can also adjust the level of the channel by using the slider. You can adjust the tempo by tapping the tempo icon to the left or right. You can lock the tempo so it stays the same while changing between styles. Otherwise, when changing styles, the preset tempo of that theme is used. Tap on the BPM number to set the tempo to your beat. Solo. To start playing solo instruments, tap the solo icon level. You can adjust the solo with the arrow. To choose your solo instrument, tap the solo icon on the top right. Choose the category such as synth. Press the icon for one second and then choose the specific sound in that specific category. Solo plus sustain. This feature is meant to keep the solo sound going even after you take your hands off the guitar. It works for chord only. It can be played with no accompaniment or as another channel adding to the accompaniment. 
For example, let's choose Lush Strings from the orchestral category. I can play it as a solo string sound, as a chord accompaniment to my strumming, or add it as an additional channel to the accompaniment. Thank you. 